I don't want that right now. You know, like I did, I had a heart of stone. I did not, I was not soft to the things of God. I was not, um, my ear was not inclined to Him. Um, because I was deceived as I was replacing, you know, my desire to hear God with drugs and alcohol. It was just, it was total deception. And so the more I came to church, in the wreck that I was in, you know, like, nobody be knowing though, because it's Sunday, you know, put your game face on. And the love that I needed was people looking past, you know, the game face and seeing, like, the Holy Spirit's giving me insight on that, and I, I'm going to love you through that. It always got worse. I inserted myself into the situation trying to make it better. But when I got the revelation of love, um, that's when everything broke. Hey, and welcome to Winning Conversations. We are glad you're here. Today, I'm joined with Dan. How are you, Dan? I'm doing well. How are you? Doing great. And our guests today are Stephen and Summer Martin. We're glad you're here. How are you all doing? Great. It's an honor to be here. Oh, we're glad to have you. Great. How are y'all today? We're good. We're having a great day. It is a really good day. Yeah, we're going to have a good day. You guys uh, are a power couple, so to say, at our church. A lot of people maybe Aww. see you and don't know you, and we're really excited to sit down and just kind of unpack your story a little bit. But how long have y'all been here at Heritage? Uh, we came in 2016. Okay. Look yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we came in 2016. Um it was right when we had, right after we had Isaac, and oh, okay. we definitely knew we had to get planted in a church. So we visited once before, and things didn't go out quite like we agreed. We thought we weren't in total agreement yet on a church. So I gotcha. uh, we came back, and when we came back, praise God, we got into an agreement that this was going to be our church. And a lot of it had to do with kind of how Stephen responded to it the second time around. Yeah, so, um, you know, there's been a transition through both of our lives over the past few years. Okay. Um, when I first came to the church, you know, I was very closed off. Um, I didn't want to talk to anybody, be around anybody, you know, just come in, let me sit down and leave. Don't talk to me. Um, and But part of the culture of the church just kind of naturally took that over. Um <clears throat> We, uh, you know, met Pastor Justin and things like that, and um, he had connected us uh, with the Thrive Group. And, um, you know, Summer went to the Thrive Group. I didn't want any part of it. I didn't go. Um, I had to go scope out the land, you know. <laughs> See how the people were. Yeah. You know, and I, but I eventually kind of, you know, I finally met. It was uh, Tommy and Christy Jean Greco who were the Thrive Group leaders. And I finally, like, there was one day where Tommy, I guess, hunted me down and was going to introduce himself because I hadn't met anybody because I just didn't care at that point. And, um, you know, when he shook my hand for the first time, it was the, like the love of God just came over my body and everything broke. Just It was just like a flood. It just all broke. And from that point on is when things really started to change in me. And then, you know, I started getting involved and serving and things like that. And so it was really that you know, the, the community and the love that's in the church is, is what, you know, started peeling back the layers of the onion for me. Um, and so that was really just, that was kind of the first time I started coming out of my shell, if you will. Mm. Well, because you guys do, <clears throat> you're one of the couples that are always behind the scenes servers, you know, where you're a part of the security detail, but you also do altar care. Yes. You know, and so, like, explain that a little bit. Like, what is, what is that like? Well... Uh, for me, a part of altar care is, um, honestly, it's protecting the anointing and realizing that, you know, these people are coming up here and they're vulnerable, right? And so, um, one of the things that I experience the most here is the love of Jesus and the love of Jesus never fails. The pure love of Jesus. And that's kind of, you know, up at the altar, man, that's, that's what we're focused on. That's what I'm focused on. So I just want to have my tissue, my blanket ready. Throw them, yeah. throw them, <laughs> throw them. And just for context, for those who maybe are not as familiar with like what altar care is, it is the people that stand and help minister to the people. Yes. They give them the tissues if they're crying. And if they fall down, you can cover them so they're yeah. not feeling exposed or right. anything. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So meeting some natural needs, but also being there to protect the anointing, make yeah. sure. A facilitator, facilitator. If you will. Yes. That's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. And so <clears throat> kind of walk us through that because I think that's a common story. 
that people get touched by the Jane Grecos. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> they're, part they're, of your story. Yeah, yeah. part of our story. Like, we love the Jane Grecos. So, yeah, obviously. But, like, going from, like, being closed off, you know, as, and then as a couple not really being in agreement, but kind of then that, wa- like, walk us through that process of, hey, what was it like to start going to a Thrive group and then seeing what you weren't seeing before? What, like, what were those changes like? So when we when we decided to live a life of faith, we got rid of all of our friends, all of our acquaintances. All of them. Everybody. Because <laughs> it was all, you know, it was mm. just terrible people that weren't taking us anywhere. And so, you know, when we came to Heritage, we were lacking any sort of community, anything. It was just the two of us, and we weren't getting along at all at the time. No, we weren't. And so, <laughs> but, you know, the Lord started replacing what we had given up with family, yeah, you know, mm-hmm. and, um, you know, people who have imparted into our lives and brought us further and, you know, people who also are living by faith that we gleam off of. And um, so, you know, it kind of started over the last several years, just that process of building up and, and, you know, just replacing everything we had given up with something much, much better. Mm-hmm. Did you feel like you gave up friendships? I mean, we gave up everybody. Yeah, I mean, twenty-year friendships. Uh, we so left. we we were high school sweethearts, and oh, Stephen. Yeah, we dated in high school on and off, except for every basketball season. That's when I love you, but I had to break up with him because <laughs> I was devoted <laughs> to basketball. Serious. Serious. My first love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we had friends after we got married that were you know high school friends, and it was pretty much doom and gloom. Where are we drinking next and that did not fly with Steven's personality at all, which I loved about him. And it flew a little bit too well with my personality. <laughs> so we kind of <laughs> had to like, okay, this is not going to work for our right. marriage. Where are we, What are we going to do after this? Like we're taking this out, but now what are we going to replace it with type situation that, that we had to figure out. And eventually what we came to is that, you know, it's about the kingdom and it's about kingdom relationships and, Frankly, if it doesn't matter in the scope of eternity, like, let's just let it go. Let's just let it go. Yeah, my pa- well, a pastor in Oregon would always say, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Absolutely. Because it is powerful who you connect with. Yes. When you think about, uh, when you think about that aspect of leaving a community that you knew and finding a community in the, in, within the kingdom of God and people that are encouraging you and speaking into you, what, what does that mean? What did that do, or what does that do for continuing your walk with the Lord? Well, I mean, I will never forget whenever I really accepted Pastor Justin, like, and Pastor Annette to be my pastor. And it was they, Pastor Justin and Pastor Annette were standing on the stage, and he was holding her hand, and she was a little giggly, and he just said, "We're coming up, we're coming up," and I said, "Yeah, that that's where I want to be." Like he realizes it, I see it. I want to go. I want to go up with him. Like yeah. I want to go up. So yeah. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> how, how did that community bless your walk with the Lord? It's hey, too bendy of an answer for that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't have one of those moments, but um, you know, just like everybody that we're associated with <clears throat> is, you know, they talk faith, they walk faith, and they bring us higher. You know, I don't have time to mess around with, you know wrong thinking and, and just distractions. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we have a purpose. We've been here, we've been put here for a reason. Um, and I need to be associated with people who are going to take us further yeah. towards that goal instead of messing around with all this other stuff that doesn't matter. Um, and so the, the people here have really challenged us to, you know, like just, What we were talking about the other day is like, listen, you know, if you really want to boil it down, it's like you need to shut up, stop complaining, and do what you're supposed to do, and that's it. You know, like nobody cares about all these little, you know, issues and things. Like just stop complaining, you know, and just do what you're supposed to do, and that's follow the word. I mean, the the, what comes from this pulpit is the word. It's the right word, and it's faith, and if you're not going to follow that, then, you know, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, don't waste your time with it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna waste my time with it. So then, the beauty is that's where you're at now. Mm-hmm. 
Like you guys have gotten to that point where you see the the sincerity of the word and what it means to follow it. Mm-hmm. But like 2016, that wasn't the case. No. Not you know? So like what? <laughs> <laughs> so so to the, those who are in where you're at seven years yeah. ago, right. eight years yeah. ago, what are the words that like what got you from there to now? Yeah. Like what changed? I think it was a quality decision to like, you know, because like at the time, you know, we were broke. Um, we had so many issues going on, like you name it. And it was just a quality decision of like, hey, I'm not going to do this anymore. You know, it's just, it's just, just doesn't make sense. You know, right. there's a better way. You know, making that decision and then renewing your mind, getting your mind right. Because, you know, it's not a lack of money that makes you poor. It's a wrong mindset. Yeah, that's you good. You know, it's, you know, the, the word says that we are healed, we are prosperous, we are victorious. So if you're checking your current situation to answer the question of are you prosperous, then your mind's not right. You need to check what the word says. That's good. And figuring that out for us was the key. And we had many missteps yeah. along the way, still have missteps, obviously, but like just coming to that conclusion that this is what the word says, it doesn't matter what it looks like. You know, if, if I go up, if I need healing, I go up to get prayed for, I'm not checking my body to see if I'm healed. I'm checking what the word says to see if I'm healed. So like, you know, just getting in that mindset is, is what's been the key for me specifically. Yeah. So, okay. When we first started coming here, I was addicted to alcohol and I genuinely would not ever have, like, I wouldn't admit that. I pretty, I definitely remember saying, if that pastor tells me not to drink, I'm never going back. And like, <laughs> she did say that. I Andy. totally said that, you know, in a rage one day, and like, you know, lo and behold. And he said it. And I straight was up, like, like oh, it works. Oh, wow. <laughs> but like, the devil is such a liar. And he, his goal in life is to steal the anointing from your life. You know? Right. It's to, his goal is to steal what you're called to do. And, you know, I was called to be his wife and I was called to be a mom. And because I was addicted, I did not, I truly did not think that I could live without a substance, Mm -hmm. like genuinely, you know? And, and I would think, you know, if I ever had to go a day without, you know, smoking this or drinking this, I don't think that my mind would function properly. I think I would get depressed. I would think I would get caught up in my feelings. I think that all this stuff would happen. And that's a lie from the pit of hell because truly, I mean, Jesus, the word says in Isaiah 54, surely he bore our griefs and sorrows. And that for me, that was what I was doing. My dad died when I was really young and I didn't know totally how to let Jesus have that. And also my brother died about five or six years ago. And I mean, there was another step of realizing he bore my griefs and sorrows. So just like I can receive healing from him, I can also let go of my grief and take his peace upon me. Because if he did it all on the cross, grief and sorrow is one of the things that he took from me. So to go back, like being delivered is one of the things that this this church, the love from this church really brought to me out. Uh, I think about seven years ago, I had a dream, right? Mm -hmm. So this was my dream and it was totally, I was not living in this, like, I wasn't there yet. It was a prophetic dream for me. And the dream was, so I was in a hospital, but it was like a scrubs episode of like a hospital, you know, where it's kind (laughs) of funny and it's kind of like animated, you know, scrubs. It was a good show. show. Yeah, it was a good one. And like I was on, I was not real, but it's a great show. <laughs> no, it's not. Real. I don't. I don't know about that. We don't need the technical. We'll so, but this is what makes it even more scrubsier. Um, I was on a stretcher, and I was, but I was in the hallway because there was no room. And I was like, "What's ha- what, what's happening?" And like the doctor or the nurse comes up, and they're like, "We're taking out your heart of stone, and we're giving you a heart of flesh." And I was like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> and I woke up, and I was like, "Whoa, like, okay." I don't want that right now. You know, like I did, I had a heart of stone. I did not, I was not soft to the things of God. I was not, um, my ear was not inclined to him. And what I was doing, um, because I was deceived, is I was replacing, you know, my desire to hear God with drugs and alcohol. It was just, it was total deception. And so the more I came to church, in the wreck that I was in, you know, like nobody be knowing though, cause it's Sunday, you know, put your game face on. Mm-hmm. But I was like, you know, 
There, Miss Savelle says there's hurting people outside these walls and go love them for me. Yes, there are also hurting people inside mm-hmm. these walls and they need love too. And that, you know, that's where love starts. That's and good. that is um, what we encountered here. And the love that I needed was people looking past, you know, the game face and seeing like with their discernment, I, I know, you know, I can see that look on you. I can see mm-hmm. that. The Holy Spirit's giving me insight on that, and I, I'm going to love you through that, and I'm not going to judge you about it, mm-hmm. and we're going to get through it. Like, that is what, you know, the love of Jesus, man, it, it never fails, and it always it always brings a, a harvest. So that's mm-hmm. what started to move on us, is the more that we experienced real love um, in our first years of coming here, the more we had it exemplified to us the more we could show it to each other. Because I don't think that we had ever, especially in a marriage situation, known, seen exemplified, lo- you know, love exemplified. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's, you know, learning how to love and learning what love is. You know, growing up, you know, my parents were divorced. You know, there was multiple step parents. Mm-hmm. You know, there was never a example of a healthy marriage or love at all you know because we grew up with the worldly <clears throat> definition of love um, which doesn't even come close to you know what it really is right. and so you know seeing the other marriages and hearing what was preached from the pulpit mm-hmm. um, you know uh, Chip Graham came several years ago and he told a story about his mother learning to walk in love and that's really when I got that revelation, um, you know, because with the the addictions that she had, I mean, it was it was tough. You know, there was um, it was it was rough times for me. And you know, every time there was a uh, situation, you know, I had all these speeches. You know, I'm gonna fix You're you. Ready. I'm gonna I'm mm-hmm. gonna learn you. You know, mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. how it's supposed to be done. And it it always got worse when I inserted myself into the situation, trying to make it better. But when I got the revelation of love, um, that's when everything broke, you know, and it wasn't, it wasn't me per se. It was, it was the love of God coming through me to her. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, cause there was a, the last couple times there were some, um, you know, situations with, that were alcohol related, you know, I had just, Great speeches prepared, you know, (laughs) rehearsed over and over in my mind. And the Holy Spirit said, you know, he said, no, just tell her that you love her. And I was ready for him. Mm -hmm. Like, (laughs) you know, you you wake up, you're like, like, oh, he's going to say this and I'm going to say this. And then and then he comes in and he's like, I love you. And I'm like. I love you too. <laughs> you know, like, that's not the script. That's yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. But you know, it's whenever I experienced that, I was like, wow, like, what am I doing? You know, what am I doing? And <clears throat> that's when, gosh, I, I, I realized that I could make a decision, you know, being addicted to something is not in my personal opinion, something that you have to have deliverance from. God has, God has delivered you. You are free. And I have a mind and I have a will and I have emotions and I have a choice. You know, Mm -hmm. I am the righteousness of Christ. That's, that's what it boils down to. And it's not my righteousness. It's his righteousness that's on the inside of me. And so I just had to start taking those steps, you know, of I'm done with this. I've made a decision. I've made, Mm -hmm. I made a quality decision and th- and this is what I'm sticking to and you know like there were days when I didn't take certain routes home because I knew what I would drive past or like mm-hmm. I would go into a gas station and have to be muttering you know I'm the rush of Christ when I walk past like 12 12 packs like you know like that's real life mm-hmm. <laughs> what it boiled yeah. down to is you know and there's no shame yeah. yeah there's absolutely no shame you know anybody who deals with addictions or things like that you know the devil lies to you and says that right. you know people are going to say this or think this and like who cares right. Like, right. you know, as long as you, you make that decision and you, you know, you come out of it, it's not about yesterday. It's about tomorrow. Mm-hmm. You know, what, what decision are we going to make to make tomorrow better? Yeah. And so, you know, putting down that shame and not, not hiding it from people, right. you know, like, you know, that people are here to love you and to walk through things with us. You know, I mean, we still obviously experience things, you know, we're, we're attacked constantly because we're trying to go forward. And so 
the devil doesn't like that. And it's the, the people of faith that we're around that come alongside us and say, Hey, you know, you're doing great. Let's go. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know, we're not talking about the problem. We're not focusing on that. We're focusing on what the answer is right. and yeah. what we're doing to move forward. And, you know, that's, you know, the people picking us up yeah. and walking forward. I, I with think us. that's part of the powerful part of your story is the fact that you don't wear it as shame. You don't no. wear it as like, oh, man, I lived through this and now I have a story to tell. But, you know, the word says, that, you know, one can put a thousand to flight, two can put 10,000 to flight. And that's what your community and the people who love you have come around and done. Speaking to the people who may be where you were mm -hmm. seven, eight years ago, what would you say to young couples that are walking through some of these struggles now? What would be like if you could just grab this thing, yeah. what would you say to them? Uh, well, the first thing I would say is, you know, love is a decision. You can make a choice to love someone um, wherever they are, wherever they are. And, um, this, the second thing I would say is guard your thought life, um, guard your thought life pertaining to what you think about your spouse or pertaining to what you think about, um, the situations that you're going through. Second Corinthians 10, five, it says, you know, take captive every thought and put it into the obedience of Christ. Like that is a part of being, kingdom minded and when and when you change your mind i'm a woman i love changing my mind i'm good at it <laughs> <laughs> it's my specialty um <laughs> and it's good in this aspect because right. anything that you think that you're stuck in or that you can't change or that you know it's always going to be like this or or any any of those lies from the enemy right. you answer it with the scripture you just answer it and, I mean, that's what Jesus did, right? Isn't he, like, the ultimate example? So if if you're going through, you know, your first year of marriage and it's hard, uh, love is a choice and guard your thought life. You know, Psalms 133.3 says, How blessed is it for brethren to dwell together in unity. So if you get in unity with your spouse, it says that there's a commanded blessing on them when you walk in unity. And unity doesn't start with our actions. It starts in our thought life. If, if you're not acting in unity, well, you weren't thinking in unity to begin with, right? right. So, yeah. How about That's you, Stephen? Awesome. Um, so I would say the biggest things, you know, obviously love, which we've talked about. Um, you know, you're renewing the mind, keeping it where it's supposed to be, and then your mouth. Um, you know, there's the word, our words have, power mm -hmm. it's, it's one of the biggest revelations i've had over yeah. the last few years is the power of my words because i was one of those guys that was like oh what's going to happen next oh this always happens to me you know all that stuff and once i figured out like you know if you're not speaking the word you need to keep your mouth shut um because if you're going to have tomorrow what you say today and so you know whether you're speaking over your spouse over yourself over your situation over your finances whatever the case may be you know you're saying what god says um, and that's, you know, that kind of goes along with the mind renewal as well as, you know, if you really want to break it down to just a simple bottom level is what did God say? Yeah. You know, if, if God didn't say it, if it's not in the word, then it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. And, you know, it says in the word that, um, when the Lord told Abraham, he was going to be the father of many nations, you know, he considered not the deadness of Sarah's womb. He considered not his own body. So he considered what the word said what the Lord said, not what it looked like, not yes. what everyone else said. And, you know, that's just, that's what we've come to. Is yes. like if, what did the Lord say? Mm -hmm. The Lord said to build this house. <laughs> we don't have the money. It doesn't matter. He just said to build the house. So we'll go dig a hole, mm -hmm. do what we have to do. Um, so just staying in that vein, I think is super important. Yeah. And, and that's, so I, I happen to know you guys a little bit outside of this podcast. You guys are amazing. Um, so there's been a huge transition, not only in your guys' marriage, not only in your guys' faith, but also in your professional life. You know, like it's like I, I want people to understand, like there is, a, there is a reward to this. There is a reason to walk this out. Good. It's not just because, hey, we're going to walk this out because as it says, like, like there is so much blessing on the other side of obedience. Yes. And you guys' story is a beautiful example of that, you know, and that's like not just your marriage, which is amazing, and not just your spiritual walks. It's amazing. Like that, we're like, it's amazing what God's done in your guys' life and heart, but also professionally, like personally. Like, what's that like? So, um, 
you know, when we first started coming, like I mentioned earlier, we were just broke as can be. You know, when we got married, she was making like $20,000 a year, and we were both living off of that. You know, like we're talking, you know, one can of ravioli. Good for, living. For all three meals <laughs> during the day, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's good stuff, <laughs> mind you. But, <laughs> you know, we... Uh, We've been delivered. Yeah. Like, delivered from ravioli. Thank God. It was all a good right. night when we had Vienna sausages with barbecue sauce. Yeah. You know what I mean? Come on now. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, so, you know, we obviously... You know, the, the faith is big on giving and receiving. Um, so when we got married, we got the revelation of tithing because we were not tithers. And we were off and on and, you know, just kind of one foot in, one foot out. And so we started tithing, and it hurt. And we we did it the best we could. And then, you know, we were right on the brink of bankruptcy. You know, like that was my next phone call because I didn't know what else to do. And... Um, we got the revelation on tithing, started tithing, and we slowly started coming out of that. The Lord was pulling us out. And then we started giving, and we started sowing. And, you know, um, he's brought us from that spot to where we are now, where, you know, we we do own a business. We've got our hands in several different things. Um, you know, and we're, we've been put in a spot where we're ministers of finance. And, you know, that came through putting the principles in place and being obedient to what he said. You know, when he tells us to sow a seed, we sow a seed. We don't rationalize it. We just do it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, but that's, it's been a learning process. We didn't start there, mind you. Um, but just walking through that process, you know, the, the principles work. You know, what he put in the word works. Mm-hmm. If you, you know, you have to put it all together, though, because if I'm sowing a seed and going home and calling my wife names, it doesn't work because I'm not in love. Yeah. Sure. If I'm getting out of yeah. love, I can't expect my, my seeds to work. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so you have to put it all together. You know, you can't, you can't take a truth and make it the truth. Mm-hmm. You know, there, everything in the Bible is true, but you have to put it all together as one. Um, and so that's really what's gotten us to the point <laughs> that we're at, to where we can do things for people that we never even dreamed of. You know, he has us doing things that, you know, six, seven years ago, I'd have laughed at you if you'd have told me that, you know. And so um, it's a a humbling spot to be in um, because, you know, of of where we came from, you know, so. Yeah, uh, Deuteronomy 8.18, I think it is. uh, It says, remember the Lord thy God, for it's him who gives the ability to get wealth. So um, I really love this idea of, I call it, I'm sure it's biblical. I'm sure it's somewhere. Divine compensation, right? And it's and it's the idea, it's the truth of, you know, when we are being kingdom-minded and we're about his business, he's going to be about our business. And that's the bottom line to it. Mm-hmm. It's called divine compensation. Um, I, I coach right now and I love it, but I did not take no public school giant coaching salary to do it. But I knew that God had called me to do it, so I said yes. And because I said yes, and I knew that God had told me to say yes, guess what came walking along the way? Divine compensation through another business deal where it was its j- probably more than a public school coaching salary would have ever gotten me, and I'm in the right place. So, I mean, we took that idea of truly believing that when we're doing what God called us to be, doing what God called us to do, then with it will come the rewards of that. I mean, hello, Matthew six thirty three, right? Right. Seek first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness and all these little things like money. Like <clears throat> money is just a tool. That's right. what money is. Money is a tool to further the kingdom as right. far as I'm concerned. Right. Because that's what matters in the scope of eternity. It ain't what car I drive. Or my sweet purse that I rock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you might have already answered it, but we this, yeah. this podcast has a theme. I don't know if you know it or not. <laughs> what? Maybe you've seen it or not. Have you watched the show some? We, we, <laughs> this, this church has an amazing principle to make winners in life, and, and that is what <clears throat> this church, I think, does exceptionally well, and I think you guys are an amazing example of that. But I want to know, what does that mean to you personally? When you hear that phrase, making a winner in life, how does that resonate in you? Um, so for me, a winner, um, so in Psalms 112, one, it says, blessed is the man who fears the Lord and delights greatly in his commands. So 
So that to me, that's a winner in life as someone who fears the Lord and, and delights in his commands. Um, because if the fear of the Lord is the beginning of everything. And so to me, that's what a winner is. It's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let me answer your question with a question. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Okay. So, you know, making a winner in life. I am not concerned about this earthly life. That is not my focus. My focus is on eternal life, is on the kingdom of God. So um, when, I, when I focus on doing what God's called me to do and hearing, hearing what God says to me, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But it's not just the Bible. It's listening to the word that God speaks to you personally. It's knowing, taking that time to hear God so that's, that's the first thing that I would say makes a winner is you hear God. You take time and you figure out how you're going to hear God. And whenever you hear God, you do it. Faith is in the doing. Faith is in the doing. And whenever you mess up and you don't do it, guess what? When I fall, I will arise. I do not, I will not stop. I will not, I will not be defeated because I will not give up. That is what makes a winner life. When you fall down, you get back up. Um, I play this game with my basketball girls. It's a shooting game. So there's the net, right? The net. But then there's a little V that the net makes right in the back, right in the back part of the rim. I tell them to aim for that little V. And so, like, when you're shooting, you right. aim for that little right, bitty right. V in the back of the net. Well, guess what? You can miss that V, and you can still make it in the rim. Mm -hmm. So, like, you aim for the kingdom. You aim to win with the kingdom. And when you do that, you're automatically going to win in life. You're going to win in life. It's going to go in. I mean, if you hit the little V in the back, it's going to go in. So, I mean. I love it. Changing your focus, man. Yeah. Love it. It's powerful. Those are two of my favorite answers. Those are, I, I None like of the it. answers have ever been the same. <laughs> so It is seriously the best question. It's, yeah. it's such a great question. Yeah. We love it. Because everyone gives a different answer. And those are great. This has been fun. Well, I'm so happy that you guys were here. I think this church is a better church because you guys are here. I love I you guys. Like you guys are one of the first families that we connected with when we came here. And so I have a personal space in my heart for you guys. Love you guys and what God's doing. It's amazing to see it firsthand. And I'm so happy you got to share your story. So Yeah, thanks for being authentic, real, open. Love it, love it. And thank you all for listening. <laughs> we appreciate you guys joining us on this winning conversation. We hope you join us next Friday for another amazing winning conversation. I think we'll